Hey folks, today is the final lesson of Unit 7, and we saw this unit start off probably one of the easiest units of the year in the beginning, and you know I don't use that E word, but it definitely was not too difficult. But as the chapter has gone on, it's gotten very tough. So today's no different. Today's lesson is definitely a tough one too, um, but it's awesome. You're in the right place to be watching this video first before you're trying to do any problems by yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to front load you guys with some information. You do not need any slate with me or with yourself right now. All I want you to do is watch, okay? So today's uh, lesson is all about problem solving and multi-steps using fractions, okay? So I wanna show you something today. I wanna to give you some info before we start the actual lesson. So two six, if I continue to add two six, Okay, watch what happens. So I'm gonna add two six by adding two six over and over and over again. And I wanna show you something. So if I add two six plus two six, this was way back at the beginning of the chapter. We don't know that we just keep our denominator the same. That would equal four six, okay? So that would equal four six. Let me write that here. But then if I do it again, two six plus two six, plus two six, denominator stays the same, two plus two plus two would equal six six, or we know that would be one whole, okay? Now, let's say that we did it again, okay? So we did two six plus two six plus two six, plus two six, now we're doing it four times. Now, our denominator still stays the same. Two plus two plus two would be eight six. That's an improper fraction, where the numerator is bigger than our denominator. We also learned that this fraction, an improper, is actually a fraction greater than one whole, okay? Today's lesson, though, we're gonna see fractions that are improper. The thing we wanna pay attention to is, if I go two more, so let's say I do this. I'm gonna do it six times. Two sixth plus two sixth plus two sixth. Whoa. Plus two sixth plus two sixth. And we'll do it one more time, two sixth. We know denominator stays six, all right? And I'm gonna add, and I can count by twos, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Now, check it out. This answer, 12, six. Here's what you need to know for today's lesson. If my numerator, okay, I'm sorry, if, let me say it again, if my denominator, six, can go into my numerator 12 evenly without anything being left over, then I know 12, six actually is gonna equal a whole number. Now, you might be saying, wait, slow down, Mr. D. Flippus, what does that mean? Think about it. We learned that anytime I see a fraction line with an improper fraction, it actually means to divide. So think to yourself, can we do 12 divided by six? Is that gonna equal a whole number? Yes. Six times what equals two? Six times what equals 12? Six times two. So 12, six is the same as the whole number two, okay? Eight, six, would that be a whole number? If I count by sixes, am I gonna hit eight? Mm -mm. No, it would be, I can get a mixed number out of that, but it's not gonna equal two, okay? It's not gonna equal a whole of any kind, all right? So that's important for you guys to understand that today. That's gonna to be the driving force behind a lot of these word problems for the day. So you wanna always look at your relationship between your numerator and your denominator. And you wanna see, can that denominator fit into that numerator evenly without there being anything left over? 
All right, so let me give you another one real quick like that. Oh, I lost my eraser. Nope, oh, it's way back here. Nope, that's not it. Where did it go? Oh, it's on the chair. All right, so let's say I had a problem and they're saying that someone bought a bag of, I don't know, pecans or pecans, however you say it. All right, and there's one third of a bag. All right, they want to know they get a bag of one third of uh, pecans every day. How many days would they have to keep buying a bag until they have a whole number? So we would say, all right, here's day one. They got one third of a bag of pecans. Day two. They're adding another one third to it. So one third plus one third would equal two thirds. So guys, does my three fit into my two? No. So that means I have to keep going. Day three. Add one third again. Two thirds plus one third. Three thirds. Does, are there three that fits inside of three? Yes, three times one. So, and we know this, right? Anytime my numerator and denominator are the same, three thirds would be the same as one whole. Okay, so you're gonna see a lot of these today in the lesson. I'm gonna give you some down here just to, we'll see if they work or not. If they're just one improper or two, do they equal a whole number? All right, how about Let's do eight over five. Would eight over five be a whole number? Would it equal a whole number? Well, I'm thinking, does five times something equal eight? Five, count by fives. 10, I went over, so no. But I did just say one, right? 10 over five. That would actually equal a whole number, right? 10 divided by five, or you could think of it as five times what equals 10. Two. Don't mind my elephant stomping son over top of me. <laughs> he hears me teaching and he thinks it's funny to stomp above me. All right, so Always look at the relationship between your numerator and your denominator. Um, how about, what if I had um, this one? What if I did 15 thirds? Would that equal a whole of any kind? Well, I'm thinking from top to bottom, think of it as division, right? When you're going down, 15 divided by three. Remember this line is another way to say division. So 15 divided by three equals, I'm running out of room, equals the whole number five. So yes, that one would work. This one would work, okay? You could also, I did division, right? Top to bottom, 15 divided by three equals five. You could go up, if you're going up, do the opposite. Three times what equals 15? Three times five equals 15. Okay, so like I said, that you need to understand before you can even start attempting these word problems today because that's going to be tough if you don't understand that. All right, so we're going to do a problem. It's on page 441 in your Unit 7 math book, and it's the unlock the problem. All right, so it says a gift shop sells walnuts in three-fourths pound bag, bags. So actually right here. I have my three fourths. I'm going to get my green marker because right now my circle is divided into three. So we'll do two fourths and three fourths. So there's her bag, Ann's bag. She's got three fourth bags of nuts. Ann will buy some bags of walnuts and repackage them into one pound bags. What is the least number of three fourths pound bags Ann could buy if she wants to fill? each one pound bag without any leftovers. So if we had leftovers, that means we would have an improper fraction. 
that does not go into that evenly. There's no relationship. But she doesn't want leftovers. That means it has to go into it evenly. So what we're going to do is we are going to draw a picture. Now, you don't have to draw a picture. You can count by three-fourths, two. I'm going to draw a picture so we can see it. All right, so she buys another bag of three-fourths. All right, let's shade in three-fourths. So how many does she have all together right now? Well, she has one, two, three, four, five, six. So we would say she has six-fourths. Now, let's look at this. Six divided by four. Does that equal anything? Or think of four, does four times something equal six? No, it does not. We would have leftovers. It says in the problem, she doesn't want any leftovers. So now we have to go to the next one. We're gonna get a different bag of walnuts. So I'm gonna draw my picture. There's another three-fourths. All right, I'll shade in my one-fourth. Oh man, my green's dying here. Two, three. How many do I have all together? Well, I have three-fourths, six-fourths. I just added another, and I'm adding here. Just added another three-fourths. That would be nine-fourths. So we said six-fourths didn't work. Let's check nine-fourths. Well, nine divided by four, does that equal anything? Evenly. No, it does not. Right? Just like four times nothing equals nine. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to say no. Oh, man. All right, let's do another one. So I'm going to add three-fourths more. Here's my fourth bag. We're on our fourth bag here. All right, so I'm going to do another three-fourths. Shade in my three-fourths of a bag of peak, or walnuts. All right, so I had three-fourths. Six fourths, nine fourths, add three more. That would be 12 fourths. So let's see. 12 divided by four, does that equal a whole number? Or does four times something equal 12? Yes, it does. 12 divided by four equals three, a whole number. So that would be our answer. So to answer our question, this would make three one pound bags. So on page 441, you would write, I'm sorry, the answer is not three. How many, how many bags did she have to make? One, two, three, four, okay? Three, 12 divided by four is three. That's just telling us that's how many pounds she would have all together. But the question was how many bags she would have to make. One, two, three, four. Four because there are no leftovers. 12 divided by four equals three without anything being left over. Okay? So that's the first time we've seen this. It's not easy, guys. This is not easy stuff. The pictures help me visualize it and see it in my head. I have that mental movie. And remember, I am moving quick because uh, the longer the video, the longer it takes for me to upload these videos. So I am going to do a video number two. Definitely watch it. Don't just say, oh, I got it. Go watch video number two right now because that one's going to be equally important and you want to watch that before you join today for the lesson. Okay? So go watch that right now.